Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for tuning in. I know that I haven't been posting videos in a really long time, so if there's even anybody watching this video, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support because I need it. Um, so today, because it's been a while, I thought it would be cool to do something a little different. So instead of like reviewing a book of fiction like I usually do, I thought it would be cool to review a memoir. And the memoir that I picked for this video is called Scenes from My Life by the very talented Michael K. Williams. So for those of you who are not familiar with Michael K. Williams, um, he is a very talented actor who passed away in September 2021, so just about a year ago. And one of his most iconic roles is the role of a character uh, named Omar from a series called The Wire. There's something very raw and honest about that series. And so much so that it is, it, it is pretty timeless and a lot of people have been watching it like way after it aired. So before I get into my thoughts about the book, I thought it would be important to mention that, um, you know, although he passed, Michael K. Williams passed away in, 20, in September 2021, um, this book is something that he had been working on for about two and a half years with his co-author and it is mentioned at the beginning of the book. Um, so by the time Michael K. Williams passed away, most of the book had been pretty much finished. So uh, what we see is is something that Michael K. Williams was actually working on. Like it's not something that was released just to capitalize on his death by a random person. Uh, you know, Michael K. Williams uh, actually took part into uh, writing this book because it's actually his story. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was such a powerful, powerful read. Um, so what I liked about the book is that I got to learn some really cool things about him that I didn't know. And I also got to see the world through his lenses. Um, and through and through his lenses, we I got to see what he had been through and some of the pain that he had experienced. And I'm very, very grateful um, that he had been so honest and open about so many things from the good and the bad, because there is something to take from reading this book. So some of the cool things that I learned about Michael K. Williams um, is that, you know, he started off as a dancer. Um, I didn't know that. And it's so funny because the character that he, that he played in The Wire is a pretty tough character. And because I played it so well, I almost always associated him with the character Omar that I would have never thought of him as someone who would be joyfully dancing with people. So when I was reading the, the memoir, like out of curiosity, I just Googled uh, Michael K. Williams dancing. And then I found this video of him dancing with someone in the park to house music. And he looked so free and so happy and he was vibing. And I thought it was really, really nice um, to kind of see that side of him that I would have never thought about because I, you know, I wasn't very familiar with his personal life. Um, you know, because I've only known the actor, but not the person. Um, another cool thing is that you, um, he was friends with Queen Latifah since they were teenagers. And it's so funny because their path crossed when they were teenage, when they were like teenagers. And then at some point, um, their path was deviated because like she went on to become the superstar and then he was still struggling. And then after years and years and years later, they cross again, um, you know, her still being Queen Latifah and him being like an actor who was, you know, getting booked and was being respected for his roles. So it's so interesting how life works. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, I think it's kind of a lesson as well in some ways, because um, when you read the book, Queen Latifah had been so driven into something and for him, it took him more time. So it kind of shows you that, yes, if you're driven, you can get to success like Queen Latifah. But I also it kind of also shows you that it, it's OK if it takes you more time to get somewhere because you can still reach your destination, even if it takes you a little longer. So I kind of uh, got that little lesson from uh, learning that they had known each other for a long time. Um, I really appreciated, again, how he was honest um, about uh, many things in this book, including some of the things that had happened to him. So one of the things that he's very, very honest about the book is um, his very difficult relationship that he had with his mother, which I thought was quite interesting because his mother was very, very tough on him and she didn't really leave him room to express himself. And in a lot of ways, he was always chasing her approval. Um, and that's kind of sad to read. Um, but I love that when he talks about his mom, he doesn't paint her as being a terrible person, or at least I didn't get that when I read it, because as much as he talks about the things that were more painful in his relationship with her, he also talks about how she had a rough upbringing and how, you know, hurt people hurt other people. So the lesson that I got from that is that, you know, if you don't, you know, revisit or if you don't like try to heal your trauma, 
even subconsciously you might repeat certain things you know and i love that um what i liked about his mother is that as much as she was tough with him at home and very very tough in in the way that she raised them that toughness you can also see it in the way that she didn't want to give up on her son you know how she picked him up when he fell down and how she was trying to get him help and all of that um so she's a very brave woman who has experienced a lot of pain and i'm sure right now the pain of losing her son must be unbearable so um you know my heart really goes out to her uh, because you cannot say that this woman didn't love her son because she really really did um, another thing that I thought was very powerful is how open and honest he was about his very long battle uh, with drug addiction. Um, you know, by the grace of God, I myself, I never had to deal with drug addiction of any sort or any type of substance abuse. Um, but I've read about it and I've known some people who did. And one of the things that I hear over and over again is that once you, well, they say that once you're an addict, you're always technically going to be an addict. And every single day you wake up, it's a battle to stay sober. So I felt like it was very powerful to, for him to be so honest about his ups and downs and you know how you know he was sober for some time and he's been proud of himself and then he fell back into it and then got back up um and i feel like it's very uh, commendable as well how he was like i don't think because when he talks about himself there's so much humility so i don't think he sees how brave i don't know how much he sees how brave he was because it's such a hard thing thing to deal with and i feel like it kind of checked me a little bit because sometimes when you hear about like maybe a celebrity or maybe like, I don't know, I don't have anybody in my life that I is currently dealing with like uh, substance abuse issues at the moment. But I know that as a society, a lot of times we can be judging people who like we hear that they're in rehab again and then they're using drugs again and all that. You'd be like, oh, again. But I think that when you read something like that, you can only have empathy because you see that through the lenses of someone who is battling that every day. So I really love the openness that he had um about you know his 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 um you know long battle with drug addiction which is the thing that unfortunately you know made him pass away so soon because i think that he still had time with us and it's such an unfortunate thing a tragic thing that you know you know an overdose is what is what killed him you know and um to know that he was dealing with so much, you know, like, you know, I, I don't know, I don't really have the words for it, but it was very, very moving to, to, to watch, um, to, to see things through his lenses in terms of his addiction. Um, so one thing that I thought was very, uh, also something that I admired from this book is that the sense of humility that he has throughout the book. Um, you know, he's from New York City, um, from a rough part of NYC, you know, growing up poor and all of that. And, he feels very blessed and lucky to be able to have the platform that he had as an actor and he was on a mission to bring light uh, to some people who grew up the way that he grew up but didn't have the same opportunities that he had and so the book as much as he is telling you his story I think there's like a greater good that, that he wanted to come out of this because he wanted to advocate for people who might not have the platform to speak for themselves for the youth who you know is going through so much in the streets um, he was you know trying to give them hope and also give them inspiration and also try to um, speak to the, the people who are in power to change certain things. So I think the book, the, the greater mission of the book, that's what it was. So I really love that we got to learn more about his creative process and what he has to tap into in order to get ready for a role and how does he make that role so authentic. And um, so it's actually, it's actually pretty interesting to read that if you're a creative person yourself or if you're curious about how actors get into roles like those that book, you can get a, a little bit of insight about that as well. So another lesson that I learned uh, from, uh, you know, the this uh, memoir is that you have to it's good to have goals and to have dreams but there's a side of you that has to be flexible enough to allow life to take you where you're supposed to be taken as well um so he started off wanting to be a dancer which is great he did a lot of cool things like he danced for madonna and all of that and he went on tour so that was great but at the same time with the openness that he had with where life had taken him he fell on acting and acting became his medium to reach a lot of people that he wanted to reach and do a lot of the community work that he had wanted to do. So I try to keep that in mind as well because there's a lot of successful people who ended up super successful in the way that we know them. But when we tell them like that, when we talk to them, a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, at first I wanted to do this, but then like this opportunity came and I was open to it and it turned into something else. So I kind of feel like, you know, stay open to where life can take you because you really never know. So that's another lesson that I got from this book. 
So overall, even though I really love the book, there's one thing that bothered me just a little bit is that it felt a little incomplete towards the end. And I don't know if that's like a reflection of how his life was cut short because, you know, he passed away. Or is it like the way that it was written? But I felt like there was something more that should have been towards the end of that book. And I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but still, overall, I really, really recommend it. And I would definitely recommend that book for someone who aspires to work as someone who creates policies for people, um, for people who want to work in the community. I think that there's nothing better to than, than to hear from the actual people that you want to serve and help. And so I do think that Michael K. Williams in that book represents um, a lot of people who grew up the way that he did um so that's pretty much my uh, my review um five stars i read well maybe four and a half and if you do read it and you want to talk about it with me by all means you can reach out um thanks for tuning in i hope you like the video and i will see you for my next video have a great day Bye.